Hey, it's me, Aaron, from KUHS. How you doing, man? <laughs> I can't complain. What's going on? Not much. You're in Portland, right? I'm in Seattle. Oh, Seattle. So it is, uh, what, 8? Yeah, it's early. It's it's 8.20. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Is it raining? Uh, no. No. Well, wow. it was raining. It was raining <laughs> yesterday, but yeah, Seattle does get quite a bit of rain. It threatens yeah, to rain all does. the time. Yeah. Yes. Well, thank you for taking our call once again. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Um... Uh, I, I don't know where to start other than uh, I've, I've announced you many, many times tonight during our show. Oh, boy. I don't know if you've been listening, but uh, we, we've, we've, we're making a big deal about I, you. I just caught – it was funny. I just went to your website, and uh, you were playing some funk record from God knows how many years ago that thing was. And oh. I, I heard you were going to call me. It's like, oh, crap, i gotta, I got to shut down the website. So, yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, uh, this is Mark Sargent from the film, the Netflix film. Behind the curve. Behind, Behind the, the curve. curve. Yeah. Uh, more than that, you can find him on uh, YouTube at uh, Flat Earth Clues. Yeah. yeah. Just simply search for that, and there he will pop up his channel. Yep. Lots of information, lots of data, lots of uh, facts for uh, the folks out there to get educated with. Right. Or theories, depending on which way you want to look at it. Yeah. Uh, there you go. How yeah. have you been doing uh, since the last time we chatted? Good, good. I'm getting ready for the second conference of the year, which is going to be in Auckland, New Zealand, and I leave a week from tomorrow. Going to be speaking no down there. No kidding. Yeah, yeah. It's you, I've got I've got Auckland, Calgary in May. Uh, then I've got the summer for documentaries, and then I have Stockholm in September, London, Mount Shasta, Amsterdam, and then we finish off the year in Dallas. So yeah, flat Earth on tour. Who would have thought? Flat Earth on tour. Wow, yeah. you're, you, you are going, uh, dare I say, global. Oh, I see what you did there. That's good. <laughs> now, 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 that is a question I had with the guys here a minute, moment ago, because I, I said the, the, the global phenomenon of the documentary, but yeah. what would I call it? If I, don't, if I don't call it global, what do I call it? Uh, uh, oh, oh wor worldly? How about that? Worldly. Worldly okay. phenomenon? Worldly. Yeah. Yeah. Worldly phenomena, yes. yeah. Now, the global oh, joke, we have heard that many, many times. Like, flat earthers sure. have conferences all around the world. It's like, yeah, I heard that in 2015. <laughs> yep, heard it. <laughs> well, as you know, I'm still I'm still new to this, so I'm learning. That's all right. That's good. And I'm, doing, I'm doing the best I can at learning. It, it takes um, a while. So uh, one thing, that, another, another thing that the guys and I have been chatting about the last few weeks since we spoke to you yeah. was uh, we wondered if you'd be interested in, I know you're a busy guy, yeah. so if, if, if you can't make it happen, it's it's fully understandable. What? But we would we would love to do a flat Earth update with, and T Todd graciously came up with a nickname for you, the Sarge. <laughs> I you know I've heard that before a few times since second grade. But yeah yeah sure okay. yeah okay well cool so we could do a flat Earth update with the Sarge, and maybe it could be a weekly thing or with, when you're sure. available. I mean I know that sure. you are no a, no no we could we could do it. How, I mean I, point, if, so. if it's, as long as the segment's not too long, sure I, yeah I'd be happy to do it. We don't want to take up much of your time, but we just we want to do our best to get the word out and get <laughs> get get the uh, you know plant the seeds. Yeah, and and make make sure your phone lines and emails get just cluttered with people that are going. What are you guys crazy? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Why not? Well, yeah. we are. So <laughs> no, no. It's I mean it's true. Every every time I do a show, in fact, it's funny. I I even get ones where people are saying, "Oh, yeah, the phone lines are lighting up," and that's really weird because this is not a call-in show. And that 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 happens a lot. So yeah, yeah, sure, be well, happy to. We're a tiny little community radio station in Hot Springs, Arkansas. We are solar powered, and um, we only have one phone line, so we're not going to have that. Problem. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> and and small small world. I was just I was in Hot Springs not that long ago for the uh, the Hot Springs Film Festival. They actually uh, flew me out there to uh, do a Q and A for the, um, the the movie when it came out. Yeah, the Hot Springs Documented Film Fest. You were yeah, here. I was here. I, ha I had a lot A lot of people approach me after you were on the show last time and said, hey, that's the guy that was here a couple yeah. weeks ago. And yeah. I said, I didn't even know you were here. Yeah, yeah, true true story. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. A very, very neat film festival, though. I, I had gone to a number of them, and that was a, that's a pretty – you guys do a nice job. It's one of the oldest documentary film fests in America. Uh, apparently. I, I had yeah. no idea. There was, there was the quite, quite a bit of pageantry involved in, in your festival. It was cool. So how did you enjoy Hot Springs? Did you like it? Uh, I was I wasn't there that long, but uh, but yeah, I was only I was only there a couple nights, but it was neat. Yeah, I got to, got to walk around the streets and uh, go to a weird g gangster museum. I think. Yeah, 
yeah. the Gangster Museum. Yep, wow. went to that. They they had drinks and hors d'oeuvres there for part of the film festival, and uh, yeah. So I didn't get to didn't get a chance to to do too much, but it was fun. It was, and then flew out of um, Little Rock on the way home. Where did you stay, if you don't mind me asking? Oh boy, uh, the hotel where the festival was at. So oh, the Arlington. Yeah, 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 yeah. The big, the big one, big, the big old one. The, the, the plumbing, le- the plumbing isn't exactly top notch there, but it's a fun hotel. <laughs> I, I like it. It's, it was, it's it was a cool. legendary place. It's supposed to be haunted. It was Alcabon really stayed there, um, and it's uh, yeah, it's it's in a little bit of disrepair. Oh, that's help. all right. It's, Again, I I I like it. I'm older, so it, it was kind of fun. I you know, it's, yeah, cool. It's more interesting than a Best Western. Let's put it that way. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, fun lobby. That's, yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, very fun lobby. Very fun lobby. So, so uh, other than touring around the uh, palatial uh, plateau, if you will, where right. are you? What, what, what else is going on with you right now? What am I working on? I yeah. am working uh, videos a lot. Uh, doing well. Okay, on top of the the conferences, I get to do meetups and do the promos for the meetups. We've done. Oh wow, 300 and change regional meetups uh, in the United States and Canada and and England, and then uh, other than that, just just cranking out videos as fast as I can. Do Q and A videos, subject matter. I have a you know a radio show on Tuesday nights, uh, which I do, and then you know working. You know people people are saying, oh you got to work on a second book. It's like really. Is that time already? <laughs> so yeah, between all that, I've, I've I've kept. Oh, then I'm sorry, and all the interviews. Uh, in fact, yeah, I did. Where- Go ahead. Go, go ahead. Go ahead, please. Oh, the interviews I've done. Uh, I did uh, the Today Show in Australia. That was fun. I got to, to do that at a studio down in um, Seattle, and so they, they fed me into that. And, uh, and uh, oh boy, uh, Trinity Broadcasting Network is coming up here. They're going to be here the day after tomorrow. They're coming up to Seattle to shoot a segment, which is fun. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, between all those things, I'm, I'm flat earth all the time. You, you, the so the documentary has really uh, kind of oh, set yeah. things off. Yeah, ever since that thing came out, uh, it has been nutty. And what's weird is it's amazing how many, even though the director hated me talking to younger people, you know, because there was a twelve-year-old kid that, that that talked to me in the documentary. I have yeah. had so many calls from universities and high schools, and even a couple of junior high schools. Where there's kids saying, "Oh yeah, you know, we'd love to talk to you." I mean, you know, with teacher teacher um, endorsed. I had a um, a classroom in Pennsylvania where the teacher organized the whole thing. We did this Skype Skype conversation where all the kids had their questions ready and, and were asking me things. Uh, even the local high school here uh, grabbed me, and, and yeah, it's it's been amazing. And so I imagine that the questions were very varied, in in and maybe even some antagonistic how do you handle questions like that because i mean let's face it there is a large group of people probably larger than us that are that hate flat earth yeah yeah that are not into the flat earth theory i i get that question quite a bit especially as i've been doing more and more interviews it's like how can you why don't you get mad when when people yell at you and call you all these names and 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 well yeah there's no reason to get mad well well that's just it though there you know people get defensive it's like you're stupid you're retarded and you know they just go off on you <laughs> and, and it's like well no i can't get mad at you because i i can't even get really defensive because i was you that, that's why i try to tell those look five years ago i would have been right there pointing at me going <laughs> idiot but no i i can't uh it, it, it's hypocritical so i try i in fact i tell him i go do you even know why you're angry right now it's like you're not you're not mad at me. You know you're mad at you're mad at the subject. You're mad at flat Earth. Do you know why you're mad at flat Earth? Then it's because of the conditioning, and that doesn't necessarily calm them down, but at least it gets it away from me. Uh, you know, rather than shoot the messengers. So I no, I yeah. don't mind. I, I don't I don't because it everybody starts out that way, including me. I I hate it. In fact, every, the T-shirt reads, "I became a flat Earther because I tried to debunk it or I tried to disprove it." And yeah. and what I tell people, I'll tell your listeners right now. It's like, I'm, I'm not here to convince you. I'm not here to persuade you. I'm just here to get you to think about it. Plant the seed and see what happens. Yeah, and a, so, lot of, a lot of people won't go for it, but some will. So something that they sort of brushed over in the film, and I hate to keep, go- hate, hate to keep going back to that. That's and fine. I hope that we can I hope we can develop a relationship what? beyond the movie, and I don't have to reference the movie anymore. What? That's all right. Uh, but a big question I've had is that, because they didn't really address it in the film, but what was your tipping point? What was the tipping point? Because you were, you were, this just kind of happened. Oh, you. yeah, yeah, yeah. The tipping point for me was the Antarctic Treaty. 
which was so I I was looking at this thing in 2014 and I was I was trying to connect a few dots and I was going, eh, you know, this is pretty good." And then I got to the Antarctic Treaty and what which said that no corporation is ever allowed to set up shop down there from any country ever in in the history of our civilization. And you if you if you all of a sudden became a billionaire tomorrow and started your own uh, country, you would get a piece of paper put in front of you that says, oh, yeah, by the way, sign this. And what's it say? Well, you can't go down to Antarctica and do anything down there ever, forever. Uh, and it's not a, not even for up for debate until 2041. It's like, OK, why does that matter? It matters because everybody knows that I don't care where you are and, and what status of, of life you're in. Everybody knows this world, especially in, in capitalism, we run off money and greed and power. That's how the, the world works. Nine out of every sure. 10 problems running off money. Well, what what conspiracy is bigger than money? Because when the United States government goes down there in the 50s and says that the entire Antarctic continent is made out of money and we're just and they're worried about, you know, fighting over this thing. And then all of a sudden everybody leaves unilaterally and they all sign this treaty. It's like, yep, nobody needs to go down there ever. It's like, what are you talking about? There's, there's, there's resources to be had. There's no there's nothing. You don't have to clear cut forests or any or move any animals or anything like that. It's just made out of money. And that's when all of a sudden it occurred to me. It's like, yeah, this conspiracy is bigger than money. It's the, think of any conspiracy out there. This one is bigger than that, which is uh, think of it this way. If you had, let's say you were the head of uh, Exxon Mobil and you wanted to go down there to, to do oil, right? Well, there's a problem in that your planes, your helicopters, your tractors eventually would be going all over the place doing survey missions. And eventually somebody's going to find something that you don't want them to see. Well, what do you do? And the, there'd be too many loose ends. And it's the only time I've ever seen it where the government's just said, you know what? The money's not worth it. <laughs> Let's just lock it down. Yeah. Wow. And, so how do you... Sorry, go ahead. So how do you, how do you explain the... Um, and again, I'm, just, I'm coming from a place of That's learning. That's all right. That's all right. Go ahead. So how do you explain the... Um, the uh, the studies on the, on, on the ice caps and and the, and the melting and the oh yeah 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 no no I'm not saying there's nobody down there I mean the the military can go down there and military scientists can go down there but wait are they but wait but 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 wait yes. Mr. Sarge yes. can I call you Mark sure of course okay Mark yeah I'm the one that but, called him Sarge you call him Sarge I said Mr. Sarge uh, but it, 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 you said down there. <laughs> Sorry, out there. There you go. Okay, Sorry, so you, good, good point. Well, look, if I don't say if I don't say down there, people are going to be like, well, "What's he mean when he says out there?" So uh, either way, but okay, out there, okay. the outer rim, out there. Sure. Out there. the outer rim. He does have to translate for the so people that, that aren't in the know. Yeah, I understand. Sorry. And so, so when you say out there, like these these points are, they're they're horizontally out there. Right. They're not. They, they don't actually follow a. No, no, no. Again, you're uh, for the for the listener that's new to this whole concept, and, and there might be a few. Uh, what I'm saying is, I might be one myself. I'm learning, and that's that, why that's I keep okay. You, Remember, <laughs> you are in a big building, a big giant structure that's probably twenty thousand miles wide, with walls and a floor and a ceiling, and inside this giant building is a giant saltwater lake, and inside that lake are a bunch of islands that we call continents. And so okay. the water can't go anywhere, and the edge of the Antarctic coastline is just the beginning of a massive, massive section of land that probably goes inland thousands and thousands of miles that they're not going to put on any map because it just it's it's it freak people out. As a matter of fact, the the UN flag. If you ever want to have some fun, look at the UN flag, uh, and I put it in the clues, which was there's one thing missing on the UN flag. All the continents are there except for one. That's Antarctica. Why, why would you leave out an entire continent uh, from the UN flag? The whole point is it's all the, the world there. But instead, they put this giant, weird Greco-Roman wreath around the outside. It's easy to put the Antarctica in there if you wanted to, but they're not going to do it because they don't want people to think about it. Wow. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Interesting. Right? Right? Interesting. It's true. It's true. Absolutely so, true. So, so, so is, is, and, and I've, been, I've been doing a lot of research since the film and since we spoke last, yeah. is there a is there a sort of like an ice is it an ice wall that's going around the whole thing? Okay, or how does that it, work? You, all right. It starts at so if you go out to Antarctica right now, it doesn't matter if you believe in a globe or or the flat world. Uh, eventually, you're going to run into what we call Antarctica, and, and and there's images of this. You can Google pictures of Antarctica, and they're all out there. And that is the coastline. Of, most of the coastline of Antarctica is a 200. I'm not saying it's Game of Thrones style, although it's very appropriate considering the last season just started. Uh, it's it's a couple hundred feet high, right off the water. And once you get on top of that, 
then it starts sloping up immediately. It's really unique as a continent because most of like our land masses, they don't go up that high. But this is a plateau. Antarctica, even by mainstream science, says it's a, it's a plateau at about 14,000 feet high. Well, there's a problem there, and that is uh, altitude sickness kicks in around 7,000 feet. And this is at least double that. And that's just the flat parts. Then you go up, there's mountain ranges, which Admiral Byrd said there's entire mountain ranges made out of coal. And anyway, that goes inland a great, great deal. And then eventually people say, okay, what is the edge? I say, I don't know, thousands of miles inland, there's some sort of wall, wherever the, whatever the out, out, outer barrier of this thing is. And, and they say, well, what's it made out of? It's like, oh, you got me. High frequency, force field, electromagnetic, heavy element, heavy water. Take your pick. Either way, uh, you can't punch through it, which uh, we looked at, which was the... Um, uh, the high altitude nuclear testing program between the United States and the Soviet Union from 58 Art. until 62. Sorry, I rambled. Go ahead. No, you're not, you're not rambling. It's Harp. okay. <clears throat> what is that, Todd? Is it harp? Harp. What is harp? Oh, no, no, no. Harp's different. Har harp's different. Oh, no. Let me get into harp. So, so imagine, and this is what men do, right? So you, let's say you find the edge of the world. Which is, turns out to be a big a big wall. What what are men gonna do? It's like okay, we gotta be able to shoot through this, right? Get a cannon, right? It's like that's that's what they're gonna do. And well, cannons aren't gonna work. Conventional explosives aren't gonna work. So they yeah, literally yeah. used atomic weapons for four years. That's all the United States and the Soviet Union did for four years, from fifty eight till sixty two, and that wasn't working. So harp. It's like so at that point you gotta use a different trick. A different trick. It's like okay, well brute force isn't working. What else you got in your bag of tricks? Oh, you got this harp that's high altitude, re you know, electromagnetic frequencies, alter the weather. Maybe we can punch through it with that. Nope, that's not doing anything. So what? it's like, well, what else you got? The latest thing, which I think is even spookier, is uh, CERN. In that, you know, the, the big collider over in Europe. Hadron yeah. Collider. Yeah, Hadron yeah. Collider. Holy smokes. Because at that point, it's like, okay, let's not let's not worry about busting through it. Maybe we can gateway through it. It's like, oh, what happens if we open this gate? Oh, who knows, right? It's, you know, if you open up a gate to another dimension, I, what <laughs> what what could go wrong there? I don't know. So, anyway. let, me, so let me ask you this, because again, I'm curious. Why yeah. are we? Why are we? Af and, and, and and forgive me if I if I sound no, frank, no. but it, it sounds like you're uh, afraid of what might be on the outside of what. Yeah. Well, we're calling the dome. Yeah, that's that, the big that question. We yet, if, that we yet don't know what it's made out of. Well, if we are in some sort of snow globe, in some sort of building, whatever, let's call it a snow globe, right? Are we in a snow globe? I mean, we are, well, let's say let's say it's a big let's say it's a big let's say it's a big box, okay? Because let's just it's say it's a big box. box. It, whatever. I mean, there's some another radio station. They said uh, they say, well, it's kind of like a pizza box, right? It's like, well, it's not bad, I suppose, if pizza box is what you want to go with. But think about this. If there's only two options here, and that is, are we in here because they want to keep us safe from what's outside? You know, okay, are we a box? Are we? Who's they? Well, whoever built this place. To take. Who built what place? Well, that's therein lies the question. Well, so that, that's that's an, one of the an, big that's one of the big questions. We did not build. Let me make something really clear here. We did not build but this wait, place. Answer, but answer the question, then, Mark. Are you an atheist? No, no, I'm not an atheist. Uh, no, in I fact, in atheist. fact, flat Earth I'm is going. Atheist. Who is? I am Aaron. Okay, well, that's fine. You can be an yeah. atheist if you want, uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah. And, but it's and so, it's so, not going to. So that's why that, that's why this stuff becomes a little, this stuff is a little more reality to me than I say maybe some of my co my co my my, my co parts. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm I, I succumbed to atheism many many years ago. Sure. And uh, you know I'm I'm still normal and healthy and, and happy and I love and, well, and you, I, I enjoy life. You all, haven't all you haven't burst into else. flames and lightning but, uh, hasn't struck you, so that's fine. Well, yeah, I'm fine. Uh, but, yeah, so uh, when you say they, I need to know who they oh, are. Oh, okay. Well, okay, T take your pick. Because, again, the, there's a lot of forks in the roads here with options. And that is, uh, it, it's going to be one of two things. Either an advanced civilization that's much older and much more powerful than ourselves, or the other side, which is the divine. Take your pick. I'm not going to pick for you. Uh, but the, the point is, whoever, let's, let's say, we'll go with the advanced civilization for your sake. Uh, let's say this place was built, right? So the question is, why are we in here? Are we in here because we need to be protected from outs what's outside of here? Like a box of kittens? Or are we a box of scorpions that should never ever be let out into the rest of the universe? Because it could be, you know, dangerous. And look, every just about every sci-fi movie we've ever touched on the, picks the latter, including, you know, the day the Earth stood still, back in the day. Which sure, like, It's like, sure. yeah, you guys shouldn't be allowed to go anywhere ever. 
So I, I don't know. Again, take your take your pick. I I kind of agree. We you know we're we're not exactly the the most uh, non destructive group in the world. We we tend to savage just about everything when we lay our hands on it. Men yeah. anyway. Women not so much. Yeah. So okay. Okay. So so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ancient, ancient ancient civilization. civilization. Yeah. Okay. That's outside keeping us trapped. Right. Or I don't know. Safe. Well, safe. So safe or trapped. Your choice. Yeah. Why. Why can't it be a globe? Why does it have to be a globe? Meaning, uh, l- l- let me use a Carl, Carl Sagan why, line, which is... Why shouldn't it be a globe? Ah, you see, that's, the, that's the, the, the only reason you're I'm saying that, though, is to... because you were shown a globe for so long, that's all you know. Remember, before, not not that long ago, go back a thousand years, I know people say, oh, no, we did it 2,000 years ago. It's like, come on, I've got a diagram of every culture that ever lived a thousand years ago, and they all drew the same thing, like Richard Dreyfus in Close Encounters, which they all drew a snow globe, because that's what they felt it was. What I'm saying is, let's say, it, we'll go with the God thing just for a second. Well, if we want to do the God thing because he, God can build an entire solar system, that's fine. But in advanced civilization, we'll say they can build it as well. If 99.9% of the people uh, in this world believe in the illusion, believe in the Truman Show version of this. Remember, Truman was only living in a 20-mile-wide sports stadium, and he believed it all. So if most if most of the people that live here, and I mean almost all of them, believe in the illusion, that's what you go with. That's what the most efficient option is. You don't have to build a globe or a solar system or Carl Sagan, great line where he said, look, he goes, the universe in some ways doesn't make sense because there's a lot of wasted space. Absolutely. But if it's a building, if it's a Hollywood backlot, if it's a terrarium planetarium, then it's absolutely amazingly efficient. And that's what I would expect from an advanced civilization. Again, use another pop culture reference, uh, uh, the movie Contact, which was, you know, any any civilization that's way, way more advanced than us is going to function on multiple levels of efficiency, which is what this place is. If it's a dome, if it's a, if it's a, if it's a planetarium, everything works better and it works easier. It works with less energy and everybody gets the same thing out of it. Um, let me give another quick side note, which is um, people say, well, you're killing um, astrology, not astronomy, but astrology. You know, I'm a double Gemini with a bad moon rising, that sort of thing. Got it. And it's like, Got it. no, no, I'm not killing ast- astrology at all. What I'm saying is the stars and the planets and the sun and the moon are just really one giant clock system. It's all it really is. And it's well, very... what, what are they? What are they? What, I mean... Well, the, 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 stars well, and the, the stars and the planets are just pretty, pretty lights. How but... far are they? So are these things, so seriously, Mark, though, are these things, are these things, are they secular? Are they man-made? What's going no, on No, 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 nothing, nothing, uh, nothing's been made by us. Uh, and by that, I mean, there may be older civilizations. Come on, we all know, if you watched Ancient Aliens at all, even if you didn't buy into the program, you know there's some really, really old stuff lying around that we had nothing to do with. So, 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 so wait a minute, why not just skip all this and say we're, it's all just a hologram? Ooh, well, I like where I, I, I mean? like. I mean, no, I like where you're. I, no, I like where your head's at. No, 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 no. That's that's. It's the, like the Matrix, man. Hey, the Matrix, which by the way turned 20 years old this year. Let's talk about how time flies, and that's when. And we've been talking about this for a while, right? So Matrix 20. You know, we've been talking about holograms and virtual reality for at least 20 years, and people still don't get it. And and let me let me delve into the virtual reality thing for just a sec because. The reason why I don't even, I, I absolutely believe it. I, God is a programmer, and even if, if it's not God, then an advanced civilization is a programmer, and holograms are very, very real and very, very possible. Uh, the reason why I don't bring it up is because most people don't get it. The, you, I, look, the average person, we've had microwaves since, what, the 70s? Nobody knows how they work. We, you know, just put the freaking popcorn in, hit the button. If it comes out not burned, it's a great day. You don't, I you think don't care. people know how it works. I think they know how it works. No, 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 no. The, the people that built it, sure, but the people that use it, they have no idea how it works. And this is well, of I course. I mean, a, lot of people, a, pop, a lot of people don't know how, how an algorithm works, but actually, you know, you're talking to someone that does. Okay, no, no, that's good. So, so, <laughs> I actually know how an algorithm works. I program them myself. Perfect, perfect. Okay, many, many times in the last 25 years. Ver, but the, but e- the, Elon, the, point I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to get at, too, though, Mark, yeah. is that, like, I think you might be an atheist, man. I think you might be in that zone because no, no, I don't no, know no, no, how no. you couldn't. Uh, well, no, no. Look, uh, I ex- accept what what we know as reality uh, without having some kind of no, no. Know, I, I'm kind of in the I, I'm about in the, you know Jesus died on a cross. Okay, uh, and they actually say it was probably, it was actually an X because 
you, your, your body, phys, your, the physiology, physiology of your body cannot actually sustain the weight of your body if you're staked by two hands and feet. Mm. You would rip, you would rip right off the cross. So, but if it's uh, the, but if it's virtual, you can you can give Jesus all sorts of fun stuff, couldn't you? Virtual though, I mean, uh, virtual. again, I, I, and for, I don't want to freak people out because your listeners are probably going, "Oh my God, not virtual!" If you want to look into something fun and virtual, I'll leave it at this. Look into the double slit experiment, uh, the single electron gun experiment from about fifteen years ago. And that basically shows people that what's... And you're saying, okay, why? It's because what's happening in that experiment is what's happening in our world. Uh, we, what we design in video games is actually happening in, in experiments that we're doing with electron guns. And it shouldn't be that way. We're, we're kind of picking up on matrixy type stuff. And even though, like, I hate Elon Musk and everything he stands for, but the one thing I do agree with what he said was, he goes, there was a high probability... Hi, probably. Wait, 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 wait. Why, I, you why, know, why do you like, hate Elon Musk, though? Wait, I wait, like when he shot that car into space. Oh, why yeah. do you hate Elon Musk? No, no, I hate. Oh no! Even before he shot the car into space, I hated Elon Musk because why? he oh, really do do a search. New York Post did a thing. In fact, I was so happy they did it afterwards. They said Elon Musk is a total fraud. He is never. Why? He is never. <laughs> he's never completed a promise he's ever made ever. And that is, it's like, oh, I'm gonna let me solve the the power problem after Puerto Rico had that hurricane with my uh, my solar arrays. No, uh, I'm gonna send two people around the moon in 2018. Two tourists. No. I'm going to do an, a bullet train underground from San Francisco to L.A. No, super plane uh, from the United States to China. It's going to cost the same price as a business class ticket. Not even close. Okay. But, I, I, I agree I, with Sarge. The guy's point. horrible. Just, uh, you can agree on those points. But, hey, but, but, Mark, actually, I've got uh, three or four friends that have Teslas, and they're, they're fantastic cars. Yeah. Oh, you see, and there you go. That there's the power of history re being rewritten, kind of like Ray Kroc and McDonald's. Ray Kroc didn't invent McDonald's, and Tesla was built by somebody else. Elon, when was Elon the last Musk. Time you Elon had Musk. McDonald's, Mark. What? When was the last time you ate McDonald's? Uh, honestly, actually, actually, it be, was. Be honest. It, it was uh, a couple days ago. Actually. Wow, I, I, I haven't, I haven't had McDonald's in twenty five years. Oh well, eh, you, you stop by every once in a while if you're with a group of people. It's like, oh, you know what I feel no. like? Sure, why not? Um, no, I no, deny, look, but, I deny it. I will not do it. I will not do it because I believe the chemicals in that food are screwing with your brain and they're screwing. Oh with no, your body. no, I don't so eat it all the time. Food. No, it's just Mark, you, I, I, I like you and I respect you. <laughs> And uh, dare I say, I love you. Do oh. not eat McDonald's anymore, All right, please. all right, all right. Uh, so, wait, Elon, Elon Musk. Wait, wait, I'm going to be anti-McDonald's. Well, no, that's fine. No, uh, no, I'll get. I'll, I'll that's get, a trade-off. I'll, I'll get this out, which is Elon. Elon Musk bought Tesla. He did not build Tesla. He bought them. He made his money in PayPal. He was a programmer. Get a pretty, of course. A, a pretty good programmer, from what I understand. He helped program yeah. PayPal, and he took that money and he bought Tesla, and then he started SpaceX. Tesla had not has nothing to do with him. He no, nothing, and that that c convertible that he put in space. No, that thing was absolute sham from beginning to end. I, I don't know if you have any time, but I, in sixty seconds, I could rattle off a dozen different things of the, things that went wrong that should have gone wrong with that car. It was the most beautiful image everywhere, anywhere. And when I saw it, I was like, going, "Wow, who the hell photoshopped this?" And then somebody said, "Oh yeah, by the way, it's a live link." I was going live. You, you, what? How can this be a live link? And okay, so it was, it's terrible. Sorry, go ahead. You are okay. You're, you're you're going a little off the rails now, and that's okay. I, I do want to get back to why we called you because yeah. you're the flat earth expert. Sorry. of the war of the of the of the palatial plane. Right. <laughs> so let me uh, let me uh, let me go to Todd because Todd has a couple of questions I know he's been bugging me about for the last week and a half. Oh, okay. Well, that he wanted really to ask. It's well, you it. You, you it's to all ask. right. I get questions every day. I want to give you a platform, day. Todd. Because the Sarge and I have been going at it here for a while. Okay. But I do want to say that I, I appreciate all of your input. Well, thank you. Mr. Sergeant. Thank I you. really do. And I, I, I love it. I'm so glad you're able to share it with us and our audience. Uh, Todd, I know you had a couple of questions about the black hole or some of the things. Yeah, I already so, asked a couple. But, yeah, the black hole. So what's your take on that? How about that photograph? Oh, that was a fantastic photograph. Unfortunately, that photograph was also an exact duplicate of one they used in 1987 that wasn't even shown really? in black. I'm sorry, what? Really? Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we broke that thing down in two hours. We, in fact, every time NASA releases an image like that, we just scour the archives. Kind of like when um, there was, uh, I think it was last, it was last year, when they said there was a hole in the ISS. 
and they plugged yeah. it with like yeah. a finger and some epoxy and some peanut butter or I don't know whatever they <laughs> and oh, and the whole the whole that was tweeted by Chris Hatfield, he, an astronaut, mind you. He, he, he tweeted, "Oh yeah, here's the whole." Was actually an album cover from a Christian rock band from about twelve years ago. We miss nothing. We we scour everything for everything. the The Internet Hive wow. Mind is wow. really really good. Oh yeah, yeah. NASA so was, how, they don't even try. They don't even so try. So how do we? So how do we explain space exploration? Really. <laughs> No, it's. I'll use the sorry pop culture reference. I mean, how uh, far miss, does the, the mission, bubble go? Mission Impossible, the first Mission Impossible movie, when Tom Cruise said, "Oh no, it's way worse than you think." Uh, what I'm saying is that space exploration, as you know it, has been an utter sham since minute one. Meaning NASA. Well, I have a, I, but I do have a problem, what? Mr. Sergeant. With I do have a problem with referencing films. Yes. As a factual scientific no 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 i'm just using it as kind of a as kind of a clever little intro into the topic no i never reference films as science i'm just saying that it's way worse than you know and if you're wondering why i will use lines from movies just because there's nothing new under the sun and we pretty much seen and done it in movie and films so if if i use that line you'll know why and that i'm I'm prefacing it otherwise but people will say oh you stole that from fight club oh you stole that from mission impossible it's like yeah i'm telling you in front up front i'm doing that no, space, the, the entire space program, every space program has been a sham from minute one. However, that being said, everyone that works at NASA, 99.9% of them, the people that turn the wrenches and build the field systems and polish capsules and stuff, they're actually doing legitimate jobs. You know, they're, they're working, they're collecting their checks and, and everything. Now, when they put the rocks together and then they fire them off, they're not going anywhere. They're just going off into the drink and they're splashing them down in the ocean. And no astronaut ever gets on the top of a pile of liquid explosives. That would be the last thing you'd ever want to do. Uh, but yeah, you'd have to fake it. You have to fake it because otherwise you have to militarize space, which is why all the organizations up until very, very recently have been military or government based. Space Force. Space Force. Space Force. Oh, yeah, yes. By the way, Space Force. Why, why can't we get through? Why can't we penetrate this? Uh, the dome. I, I feel like it's got to be some sort of like um, like a trick? Gel or something. Why can't we penetrate this well, thing? Look, the dome whoever, of silence. Whoever, if, if you're going to build something like this, and I'm not, uh, let's put our, ourselves in the shoes of the builder, whoever built it. You're not going to give the tools to escape <laughs> from the people that are running around inside of it. So atomic How weapon, we, you're just but, not going to do it. But who built who built it though? Who built it? Well, Sarge, well if, come on. if it's if it's if it's coming from your your angle, then it's an advanced civilization, somebody bigger and more powerful than us. Again, we could. Who's to say we're not just some giant lab experiment that's sitting on somebody's desk right now? We don't. Exactly. Yeah. So that's so and saying. that why lab experiment the, is always. Why con- can't the petri dish be a sphere? No, because because it, it's to, in, it's ooh, it's good, good idea, Todd. A dish. No, good you thinking. don't you don't you don't have to make it a sphere. That's why it's easier to make it a half sphere, meaning uh, you know just a flat circular bottom with oh, so with a dome on top. The what? It's it's more efficient. Yeah, it's way, way more efficient. And again, yeah. if the people don't know any different, who cares? I mean, I'll, I'll give you a perfect example. Let's use the virtual thing. Most people don't know this. Just about every video game you've ever played, I don't care if it's GTA or Fortnite or Minecraft or whatever the kids are playing these nowadays. Can I throw something in really quick and then you go to your point? Yeah, sure. I haven't played a video game since the Simpsons game on Nintendo. <laughs> well, perfect. In even like even then. No, no, that's fine. I, I, I no, haven't played a video game since then. I played I played, played, I that, played that as well. Now, but now go ahead. Oh no no every just about every video game you could ever think of is actually designed in on a flat surface, absolutely flat, it was the exception of you know valleys and, and mountains and stuff. And actually, it's flat and it's square, kind of like a like a holodeck in uh, on Star Trek Next Gen. So, and the reason is because uh, computers can't think in circles. They can only think in squares. And the programmers, I hate to say this, but it's true, programmers are notoriously lazy. And it's like, why would I build in a curvature of the earth if no one's going to know it? You, that's why you just build the simulations flat, because nobody's going to know. And, and if they don't know, then, hey, great, fantastic, problem solved. You just okay, tell, And then are, you can tell are, them but, whatever but, but, but you want. Sarge, we're talking about video games versus reality. What's the difference? Really, what's the difference? Be- what's the difference between a simulation, a really good simulation, of, that we make and what we are doing right now? I hear you, Todd. Better, better resolution, better, you know, a few more senses. That's about it. 
The rest of it is is we can do it. I mean, hell, we can draw. I mean, we've seen this. I don't know if you guys have seen. We can draw better people than people now. Now we can't make robots, <laughs> but it's true. I mean, I've seen I've seen drawings that are like flawless, absolutely freaking flawless, and you know, with freckles and the whole nine yards. Like, wow, that's pretty impressive. We can draw yeah. more human than human. Yeah, my kid, my kid, my my kids play Fortnite. They love it. Yeah. I watch and I go, wow, that just that's wow, good good times. And it's flat. Yeah, it's having fun. I don't know what to say about it. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah, I, I personally, I, Fortnite's... <laughs> for, I'm busy reading books. I don't know. I'm, I'm, I'm checking out some James Joyce. Nice. I don't have any time for this uh, video game stuff, but yes. Well, you see, you got culture. Um, you got class. Well, well fascinating conversation <laughs> with the stars tonight. Holy crap. I can't believe we got you back on the back on the show. Oh, happy to do it. Uh, you are... Go ahead and plug what you're doing next. You're going to... Uh, yep, going, again, to a, uh, going to a conference in New Zealand. Anyone wants to... Anyone's going to be in New Zealand. There's a Flat Earth conference happening down there in Auckland. Uh, how, the, can we, how can we find out about it? What's the website? Do you got a website? Uh, you just, just, type in, just type in Flat Earth Conference New Zealand. That's all you have to do. You'll find it. Okay. And Flat then, Earth Conference New Zealand coming up next. Yep. And then you're off to... Uh, then I do Calgary. London or... Then I do Calgary. Calgary, Calgary Canada. And then Stockholm sweden london mount shasta california amsterdam and dallas you are flying around a lot and i and i want to next time yeah. uh you're on the show yeah. mr sergeant yes. i would love to get to the flight path sure conspiracy yeah i'd love to cover that sure happy to do it i'd love to try and educate our listeners a little bit on this flight path thing because you know we see these flight paths on the websites and we see them and it appears they're wrapping around things but they're it looks very flat line. It looks very straight. Like right. I'd love to get your ideas, I and your will, theories on. I yeah. will break I it down in great, deal. great detail for you. How's that? Oh, fantastic! Right. Awesome, Mark great. Sargent, ladies and gentlemen, from the movie Beneath. No, behind, behind. behind. <laughs> I always get it wrong. I don't know why. That's I all do. right. I feel like we're under the dome. I, I don't feel like we're not her. beneath it. We're under it. That's all right. That's good. I'm still learning, Mark. That, no, you're doing great. I appreciate the education. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. And, uh, and and thanks for taking our call tonight, and we will talk to you soon. Can we maybe call you next week? Yeah, sure. Well, I'm well. next week I'll be in um, in New Zealand. But, uh, oh, crap. But, but, on Monday next week? Well, you know, what, you know what? Try, email me. Maybe I can pull it off because uh, I can route my landline down there. It's okay. We might be able to do it. Why the hell not? I've got both your phone numbers. Okay, sounds good. All right, cool. Thanks, Mark. Thanks for calling. Thanks for chatting with us, man. I appreciate it. All right, thank you, guys. All right, bye. All right, bye. Mark Sargent, ladies and gentlemen, from the... Uh